imagine being able to stand a hundred feet above the city, to be able to walk round it, to see the traffic, to see the pollution. Virtual reality allows you to do those sorts of things. We want this facility to be open to everybody, from the individual with a good idea through to the, the multinational company who want to experiment and see how this complements their existing stream of work. So we want anybody who has an idea that affects transport to put forward their ideas. A unique virtual reality laboratory has been set up to design, test and develop the transport technology of the future. It's been put in place by the Transport Systems Catapult and will support academic research and business growth in this area. Graham Fletcher is Programme Director for Computer Modelling and Visualisation at the site. There are only three of these facilities that are available anywhere, and this is the only one that is available for use by innovators and researchers. The facility here is a mixture of people and equipment, scientists, technologists and amazing facilities that allow you to experience your ideas, to understand your ideas in a setting that you cannot do in the real world. Nice large strides, get your feet apart and the key thing is to keep your head up, look to where you want to go and let your body follow. Interesting to see people walking around me. Oh, okay, I'm about to get run over. There you go. <laughs> it allows you to appreciate the, um, the challenges yeah. and some of the, the human factors aspects of walking towards a vehicle that is autonomously controlled. It's really weird to see the station here. <laughs> One amazing piece of equipment we've got here is a big omnidirectional treadmill that allows you to walk in any direction gives you the ability to be in a world, to walk around the world, to see it and experience it the way you would experience and feel the real world, but without any of the dangers. Martin Pett is a principal technologist at the site. He specialises in the study of human factors, the interaction between people and technology. The omnidirectional treadmill is a series of rollers that emanate from a central position which are powered by belts and those belts are powered by a motor. So what it does is it, it tracks the position of your head relative to the central position of the floor and the rollers will then speed up or slow down to enable you to, to walk freely around environments. So that's done by using positional tracking cameras which are around the peripheral of the floor and they know where you are, then they adjust the speed of the floor to keep you in within a certain confine. Um, for people who are familiar with Star Trek, this is a bit of technology which takes them a little step closer to the holodeck that is used in Star Trek. So this is a, a, a means by which you can travel into virtual worlds. The lab will allow designers and engineers to test out a new service or product in a virtual setting before time and money is spent on further development and manufacturing. One example is finding out more about how pedestrians respond and react around roads where driverless vehicles are in use. According to the chairman of the Transport Systems Catapult, Will Whitehorn, the human factor is a major challenge in transport innovation. Driverless trains, driverless cars, pilotless planes are going to happen. There is no two ways about it. We have a moral imperative to improve safety and reduce risk for people in their day-to-day -day lives. The only place we can now go to improve safety and reduce risk in people's day-to-day -day lives is to take out human error. Over 90% of accidents now are caused by human error. Now, I'm talking about 90% of accidents in public transport and on the roads because we've got so much better at managing the safety of everything else. Getting people to concentrate on the process of being pedestrians is becoming increasingly difficult. Headsets are almost de rigueur and earphones are almost de rigueur in the younger generation and in the older generation now. And this is a real problem. Also, we have a high number of accidents happening now with a statistical correlation of people when they're hit by a vehicle being on their mobile phone. So actually, these are some of the big issues. How do we get people to understand that actually you have to concentrate to be a good pedestrian? Graham Fletcher says virtual reality will be a vital tool 
in improving our understanding of how people are likely to respond and react to advances in transport technology. Eye contact is immensely important. It's how people communicate across different spaces. It's how we communicate with the drivers of ordinary vehicles. How is a driverless vehicle going to replicate that and allow us to interact with it? Virtual reality is the space where we can run those investigations. We can test to see how people interact with virtualised driverless vehicles without the dangers of putting them on the street in an untested format. Intelligent mobility is the future of transport. Driverless vehicles, smartphone apps and social media will all transform the ways that people and goods are transported all over the world. Virtual reality will play a vital role in nurturing and testing out that innovation process. According to Martin Pett, they already have plans to build up their pool of equipment at the new laboratory, opening up even more possibilities in research and the development of new ideas in the future. In addition to the treadmill, we're looking at other technologies that can be plugged in to enable a greater sense of immersion or interaction with virtual reality. So, for example, we're looking at a, a stereoscopic infrared camera, which allows the system to detect your hands and represent that in virtual reality. So imagine if you were to just rotate your wrist around and emanating from your wrist was a user interface with sliders and buttons. Thinking about how we can possibly use that type of technology to enable people to interact and adjust the environment they're in. So for example, in a cityscape, you might want to take away the buildings and have a slider where you simply move it from one side to the other and make them transparent or remove them completely just to show the transport aspects. <laughs>